Hello and welcome to my YouTube series Increase Your Research Impact. In this episode I will discuss ResearchGate in quite a bit of detail. ResearchGate is one of two platforms that are used by a large number of academics. Uh, we saw that virtually all of you have a ResearchGate account and the only one who doesn't has an academia.edu account. So uh, we are all using this social media for academics. Um, I found that ResearchGate is a bit more user-friendly than academia.edu. Uh, it's easier to add your papers and in our discipline I think there are more people on ResearchGate than in academia.edu. But in the humanities um, most people are on academia.edu, not on ResearchGate. So it, clearly it depends on the discipline which is most useful to you. Um, so ResearchGate is mainly seen as a paper repository and that's also how it started. But they've added new features all the time. Um, and uh, you can now see a lot of metrics about your paper as well, whether it's read, whether it's cited, whether other people have commented on it. Sometimes people even follow your paper. I'm not quite sure why you would follow a paper, but uh, maybe if it's, it's a crucial paper in your discipline and you want to know when someone else reads it or when it gets cited. To me, that would just lead to information overload, but maybe if you're a PhD student and you have like half a dozen key papers in your field, you might want to follow those. So let's take a quick look um, to see how this how this works and show you something that even though you've been working with ResearchGate for a while, you might not yet have engaged with. Um, this is just a plain simple um, introduction page with your bio and some key statistics. But as you've probably seen at the top right, you'll get the announcements. Um, so here there are some announcements of articles that achieved a particular uh, level of achievement when you get like a little badge, which I think is a bit like um, kindergarten, but never mind. Um, it might be useful if you go up for promotion to be able to say so many of my papers have achieved so many reads or whatever. But what I find usually most helpful is this, which is people who have requested a full text of one of my publications. Remember, I just said that I have copies of all of my uh, publications on my own website and also on ResearchGate, but not literally every publisher allows you to do this. And in particular, book publishers will not allow you to put the entire book on your website um, or even to put individual chapters of the book uh, on your website. I have one recent book published with Paul Grave, and they say you can put a couple of pages of the introduction, but that's about it. The rest, you are not allowed. Um, so what do you do? Uh, because that basically means that nobody will read them. Because the book is like a hundred pounds, so nobody is going to buy it. Um, it's even that expensive that libraries are not going to buy it. So. I don't know, you feel like, okay, I might as well throw in that, that article in the bin because nobody is going to have access to it. So what I've done, if I have uploaded pre-publication versions, not the published version, that's not allowed ever, pre-publication versions of all of these chapters on ResearchGate, but not in public mode, but in private mode. So they're available on ResearchGate to me with one click but they're in private mode. So this lady has requested full text of one of my publications. Um, and she's actually written a hill nice. And I've never seen this before. Usually it's, it's like just some other pre-publication version. Okay, so she's very interested in all of this um, and she wants a, pre a, a full text of the chapter. So, it says a stored private full text is available. That's the one I've stored. So I'll set respond to Nadia, share this full text. And that's it. Done. Really, really easy. So that's a way in which you can even share book chapters that you're not allowed to upload anywhere. 
Um, of course, I'm not going to add it as a full public tag because that's not allowed. Um, so I will send it in a private message and normally I would send a quick reply, but I won't do that in this case because it will take too much time. She requested a further two chapters, I'll write her a nice <laughs> email for those. Um, so look into that if you're publishing regularly in books, uh, because I think that's a really good way to make sure that your book chapters get read as well. If you want to know more about this, I suggest you read this blog post. Just Google it and you'll find it easily. With your papers online in the various repositories, the next step is to start promoting your paper. This is what I'll discuss in the next episode. Hope you'll join me.